Now let's talk about collecting eggs. Because one of the main reasons many of us get chickens in the first place is to declare our egg independence from store-bought egg cartons and the dubiously raised eggs held within. I've heard eggs be called the perfect food. People say that they contain pretty much everything needed to nourish the body aside from vitamin C. I find this a bit misleading, however, as the nutritional content of an egg is directly influenced by the hen's diet. Not all eggs are created equal. When I worked in catering, for example, the mass-produced battery eggs that we cooked with, you know, they were the cheapest ones, had thin shells and pale, anemic-looking yolks. Of course, they did the job, but now that I've raised my own eggs, I have found that the difference in quality between those eggs and my eggs is unreal. And you'll find that too. Once you gather your own eggs, still warm from the coop after being laid by a healthy, happy hen who's been eating natural food in a clean setting, you'll probably find that the hard shells, richly colored yolks, and unbeatable freshness of that real egg blows any mass-produced dozen eggs out of the water. You can also enjoy the quiet delight of having a huge variation in the eggs produced in your backyard. Because rather than having to all conform to a specific grade to fit a specific package, your homegrown eggs can vary in size and color depending on the hens that raise them. The small eggs from your little petite hen might be the perfect size for a small batch of cookies, while some giant eggs may take the place of two in your morning omelet. And while white eggs from Mediterranean egg-laying breeds are wonderful, if mass production isn't your aim, you can fill your egg basket with a virtual rainbow of fun and whimsical egg colors from chocolate brown to greens to pinks and even blue. Now let's talk about collecting and storing those wonderful eggs. When I started out with chickens, I thought the eggs were laid once a day in the morning. Now that I understand much more about the huge range of chicken breeds, I can confirm that my initial preconceptions were way off. For example, some game breeds, granted, their breeds never intended for grand egg production, they lay under 20 eggs a year. Other breeds may lay more than 300 eggs a year. Now for the typical backyard hen, you can expect a more moderate one to three eggs a week per hen, dependent on the breed. And if your hens follow their natural rhythms, they don't lay through the year. Egg production is tied to daylight length. When the late winter days start lengthening, your eggs will start appearing in the boxes again. And when the hot summer days turn their solstice corner and start to shorten, you can expect fewer eggs in your basket until the birds start molting in the fall and take their break from egg laying. I suppose I should mention that there are ways to hijack your bird's natural rhythms by using supplemental coop lighting, but I've never done it, so I really can't teach you how to do it. I personally don't like forcing my chickens out of their natural tendencies wherever possible. And since our coop is off-grid, we just let the flock follow their natural, innate chicken calendar. Now, most of my birds' eggs are actually laid in the afternoon. Since I have a small flock that usually numbers somewhere between 10 and 15 laying hens, I can even often hear when an egg is being laid and go out and collect it soon afterward. The sooner you can collect an egg after it's laid, the less likely it will be made dirty or accidentally broken. At the very least, you should collect eggs in the evening before your flock goes to bed. Now, even if you only have a few hens, I recommend that you get yourself a dedicated egg collecting basket and line it with a soft dish towel. The cloth will keep eggs from clunking together and potentially cracking each other, and the basket will keep you from slipping eggs in your pockets. Of course, there's nothing wrong with transporting an egg from the coop to the kitchen in your pocket, but for many of us, the inevitable distractions between the coop and the house may mean that we forget it's there until, well, you suddenly remember when it gets smashed. Cleaning out an eggy coat pocket is a bit of a rite of passage for both the new and experienced chicken keeper, but nobody enjoys doing it. Once the eggs are in the kitchen, you have some choices about how to store them until it's time for them to shine in your recipes. Now, it's very cute looking, but I don't really recommend putting your eggs in a basket on the counter, as endearing as the site is. It's easy for them to get cracked and as they get fumbled around, and it's really hard to keep track of how old each egg is. And then you run the risk of being surprised by a stink bomb of a surprisingly old egg <laughs> that you forgot about in the corner. Instead, though it might not look nearly as cute, an old egg carton is an easy way to have perfectly sized egg storage. If you mark one side as the older side and one side as the newer side, you can easily keep your eggs in a logical progression of freshness that always has the oldest eggs waiting to be used first. I should also mention, you usually don't need to wash farm fresh eggs and you certainly don't need to refrigerate them. Here is why. When an egg is first laid by a hen, it is coated with a protective layer called the bloom. This is a beneficial layer of good bacteria that covers the porous surface of a newly laid egg, keeping the potential chicken side safe from other invading bacteria in the long wait from being laid to hatching. 
If you ever watch your hen actively lay an egg, you can actually see the bloom dry in the first minute or so after the egg has come out. It's fascinating. Now this bloom is designed to keep the egg fresh for weeks on end at ambient temperatures. An egg on your counter, therefore, could easily last two weeks or more at room temperature and really show no obvious change in quality. Now for many of us new to chickens, the idea of storing eggs at room temperature on the counter may seem totally counterintuitive, especially if you were raised on store-bought eggs for the majority of your life. If you're an American, you're probably used to cartons of cold eggs that need to be refrigerated. If you raise your own eggs, however, that refrigeration is totally unnecessary. So why do store-bought eggs go bad if they're left out? The answer is simple. Industrial eggs have been washed. The housing conditions of most battery hens are not great, to say the least. Though those poor hens do deposit a bloom on their eggs as well, there's no caring farmer going in and hand harvesting freshly laid eggs from a clean nest. On the mechanized trek from cramped cage to carton, industrial eggs get covered with plenty of chicken poo and who knows what else. So washing the eggs makes them white and clean again for the package. But with the bloom removed, the eggs are far more prone to spoilage and therefore need to be refrigerated. Egg production in many European countries took a different approach, which is why store-bought eggs in Europe can often be left at room temperature on the counter with no issue. Rather than deciding to wash dirty eggs before packaging, European egg producers decided to favor cleaner living conditions for their hens, which results in eggs that don't need to be washed in the first place. So as a backyard egg producer, you now have total control over the living conditions of your flock, and you too can produce healthy, bloom-protected eggs that can wait happily on the shelf until it's time for service. Just keep your nesting boxes fresh and lined with clean straw or bedding and collect eggs promptly, and over 80% of the time you'll have perfectly clean eggs that can be stored unrefrigerated. And if the occasional egg gets laid on the floor of the coop by a new pullet who doesn't quite know what she's doing yet, or if a muddy-footed hen ends up soiling the nesting boxes on that rainy afternoon, those dirty eggs can just be washed and then stored in the refrigerator since the bloom is now gone. If you find an egg that is cracked, yet the inner membrane is still intact, you can also use that egg too. Just make sure it gets used as soon as possible, the day you find it, if you can. The only time our egg is really done for is if it's cracked and oozing. You're now equipped with knowing what to do with the collection and short-term storage of your delicious egg bounty. If you are new to homesteading, self-sufficient living, or farming, this is a great way to achieve encouraging success in a relatively short amount of time. The orchard may only be a foot tall, the garden may be weedy, and the house may be only half built, but the day that that first egg appears in a nest, faintly shining like a jewel, is an achievement that I hope you can experience soon.